physicsinfo.co.uk Another in the series of Physics GCSE tutorials. Topic 13, Electromagnetic Induction. Combined Science. Generating Electricity. If a magnet moves relative to a conductor, it will generate a potential difference, which in turn will drive a current. When the magnet goes in, the current will flow one way. When it comes out, it will flow the other. Looking at the magnet moving relative to the coil, as the North Pole moves to the left, the voltage moves to the left. As the magnet moves to the right, the voltage moves to the right. The faster the magnet moves, the greater the voltage. And if there are fewer turns, then less voltage is produced. So, looking at the field lines, you can see that it's only when the magnet or the coil is moving that the lines are cut and electricity is generated. A similar idea is used in a hydroelectric plant. The faster the wheel turns, the greater the potential difference generated and the higher the current. In conclusion, the induced potential difference can be increased by a number of factors. Moving the magnet faster, more turns of wire, and a stronger magnet. However, the induced current itself generates its own magnetic field, and this magnetic field opposes the original one. I'm going to demonstrate this using a plate of aluminium that is set up to swing within a magnetic field. You'll notice that the plate has slits cut into it. Aluminium, of course, is a conductor, but it's not magnetic. Now to repeat the experiment, but with a solid sheet of aluminium. Without the slits to stop electron flow, a current builds up and the opposing magnetic field is generated. This is the principle of electromagnetic braking. The aluminium disc spinning in a magnetic field generates a current. This generated current produces a magnetic field which slows down the disc. A similar effect can be seen using an electromagnet or a transformer to generate the magnetic field and making little metal rings jump. If the ring is continuous, there will be an opposing magnetic field. But if there's a single slit in the ring, the ring no longer jumps in the air. This one is a solid ring. whereas this one has a single slit in it. And this forms the basic idea of magnetic levitation, or maglev. future, trains capable of speeds around five or six hundred kilometers per hour could encompass the globe and help to reduce the effects of air travel on global warming. Transformers only work with alternating current. An alternating potential difference drives an alternating current in one circuit and this can result in an alternating current and hence an alternating potential difference in a second circuit. Transformers do not work with direct current. They do, however, work with AC, alternating current.
This is a transformer in a local substation. Transformers are by no means 100% efficient, but all the questions you'll be asked will assume that they are. Basically, they will assume that the power into the primary will equal the power out at the secondary. Amps times volts in equals amps times volts out. And again, you may well have to rearrange and calculate. This is just an example showing that though the voltage pretty much increases in the ratio of the number of turns, the efficiency is very poor. Transformers are an essential part of the national grid where pylons carry electricity all around the country. The national grid distributes electrical energy all around the country. Supply and use can be separated by many miles. Electrical energy is distributed at very high voltages and, because P equals IV, this means the current is kept relatively low. Current flowing in cables causes them to heat up and this is the main source of line loss. Power is amps times volts and V equals IR, therefore power is amps times amps times resistance. In other words, P equals I squared R. So three times the current results in nine times the power loss. Current in the grid is AC alternating and step up transformers are used to increase the voltage. Locally, the voltage is again reduced to levels that are safe using step down transformers. A quick picture showing how step up and step down transformers are used. In conclusion, power loss is proportional to the square of the current flowing. Voltages are increased by step-up transformers and reduced by step-down transformers. High voltages, and hence low currents, result in increased efficiency. And that's it. Thank you for watching.